Hi, I'm Michael Joy. Welcome to another reaction video. I want to say up front here, if you're a subscriber or catching this video randomly, just know that this is a mold making video. We make a lot of content here and I'm a professional mold maker. And so you may or may not want to be on this bus if you're interested in some other things. But for the makers out there, get ready. Okay, Michael Joy, welcome back. Wait, this is Michael Joy. I'm welcoming you back. We've been sitting here for a while making these videos, so I don't know what this one is about. How to make a plaster mold. Did I pick this one? Yeah. Oh boy, I don't, I don't think I watched this even fast. Let's see what we get into here. Could be entertaining, could be educational. I just don't know. Art school. Looks like my ad. Two hours later. Okay, I got the beginning. It's a lot of time for a beginning. One eternity later. Industrial design tutorials? In order to start making a plaster mold, you must follow this procedure to get oh. the desired result. You must follow start, this procedure. I'm gonna freaking pay attention. Making sure that all the materials and tools you need are set and prepared. Create a clean space having all your materials close to you. You will need your model. Plaster, That's a bucket, not a model. Plaster, That's the plaster, plaster empty, clamps, a mess. Clay tools, demolding soap, Don't use those clamps. Container. They get gummed up. They're too expensive. The Don't start with a glass model. They're tricky. I know where are we going. It's it started like I must do this, but I'm I'm thinking maybe it's a must not do this video. Okay, it's like Richard. You gotta you saw him with the the vase. You got to equalize this. Again, make a mold of something that matters. Uh, this is this is good practice, but I would have just poured plaster in there. Oh, did she just cut her hand? Yeah. Laminated wood board. That's good. It looks like her height is not equal. could have smoothed that out so much nicer. Okay. I'm gonna stop just for a minute. So I'm, I'm crashing down on a few things here because there's some practices that she's doing that will work. My intention is to kind of say, hey, don't, don't touch that, it's hot, <laughs> you know? If you don't know uh, what not to do, it's sometimes, it, it, this looks like a why not do it. And the reason I stopped right here in the video is what I notice about, about a lot of beginning mold makers is when they're claying up around the model, they'll overwork the clay like it's a sculpture and they put it in, put it in, put it in, put it in. It's the top layer that you need to care about, not, the, not so much the bottom layer. And a lot of people spend time um, on this bottom layer and it, it's, it's a nothing layer. It all gets covered. Okay, so that took her a while. She'll clean this up, I hope. The clay bed should be flat and smooth. Mm -hmm. it should be Good. Measuring. Nice. But make sure that you at nice. Least two it's about an inch. Centimeters free around the model to pour the plaster. Glass shapes are really tricky. I mean, they look easy, but they're tricky. Now, when you're dragging across a, a wall like that, if you have a, if you have a, sh a short tool and a wide wall, that, you're always gonna cut in steps. You need to have a wide tool dragging across that, like a ruler or a long knife. Uh, because otherwise, every time you drag, you just keep accentuating the contours that you've put in there rather than forcing the contours to be flat. These, um, I don't know what type of, clamps, these are called, I, I can't think of it at the minute, but they get in the way of the mold box. Uh, now you gotta work around them, and if you spill plaster on them, then you're picking plaster out of the threads. So they're good clamps, but uh, I think it's, they're not good for mold making. They take time, you could use a trigger clamp and be there faster. I just wouldn't, I just would use spring clamps. Fill the inside and outside gaps of the container with clay. 
She didn't put any mold keys in. I think a larger workboard would be great because what happens now is those clamps are extending over her board and they can get knocked off. It's good she's wearing a mask, I like that. Oh, um, okay. If you have a mixing bucket, this looks like a floor mopping bucket or a paint, no, it's a paint roller bucket. The things that I, I oohed about is that A, it's not a round bucket, so your plaster's not gonna swirl nice, and B, it has a texture in it, so your plaster's gonna hang up on that texture. So every time you try to clean that bucket, it's already Velcro-like inside there. Round buckets for mixing plaster, it'll save you time. For a kilogram of plaster, you need 700 milliliters of water. Yeah, it's uh, one, one gallon of water, 11 pounds of number one pottery. That's your, and then you divide that accordingly. Half that, half, half water, half pounds, yeah. You gotta let it soak, you know that by now if you've watched our videos. This is really important, you, otherwise you'll get lumpy plaster. She's happy. Uh, she's not doing a good job there. So it's interesting, watching certain people make molds, if she's more familiar cooking in the kitchen, let's say she's a really good cook, the cook motions of whipping make sense in the kitchen, but they don't in the mold making. I would not use a whisk to mix plaster because you're just whipping in air, which is what a whisk is designed for, which is the opposite of what you need to happen with plaster. Plus, she should be mixing with a drill this amount of, of uh, plaster. It looks like she's got quite a bit in here, so not a good mixing technique. The plaster should be poured in the corners or lowest points of the container and not- A little too watery on the pour. You can see all the air bubbles in there. That she didn't have a pouring indication line, so now she's got to fly blind or have a reason to put a stick in there or something. Doesn't do anything. Now your fingers are, see, it, see how it was milky? That meant that her plaster was poured too soon. It, you shouldn't have been able to see her finger. This is a mess. Scrape the surface to make it even and be careful to not do it too close to the model. So if she's scraping, yeah, you should be shaving. If she had a, a rasp, she could take that down really fast. So this is just a matter of not using the, the optimal tool. Those tools scrape, but you're going to continue to scrape in your uh, hills and valleys rather than making it level. Her bottom isn't clean. Wait, that sounded bad. Okay. Yeah. Sand the plaster mold using a bit of water to make the surface more uniform. Wait, did she just soap? And then she's sanding? Okay, that's not the way to make a key. First off, those tools break really easy. There's not a lot of strength in the, in the neck and her keys are too small. You need a key that's at least three quarters of an inch wide, otherwise they pop off too easy. Because remember you're making a male and a female key, one that nests inside, so this one, if it's, if it's like a cone, it's just gonna snap off. So uh, this is not the way to do it. Using a rounded object and sand it. Yeah, a quarter. Now you're gumming up your Dremel bit. Don't do that. Use 25 cents. A lot of ceramicists don't have nice nails. She has nice nails. With clay, make the other they don't last, you know. I would see, um, I'm not trying to frame this badly or anything, but she has very beautiful hands. And the ceramic department is really hard on hands and it's even harder on really beautiful wedding rings. And the idea of using a ring in a ceramics department, I can't tell you how many girls lost rings in the ceramics department, rinsing their hands off, or the, more so they would take off their ring, they would set it down, and then it's gone because it would get picked up in clay, they would set clay on side of it. So um, rings and watches in, in a shop, I just, I, I just never did it. All right, it's better. Not ideal, but it's better. She's moving forward with intention. There's too much soap on her model. Apply several layers of demolding soap. On you don't need it on the glass. And on the sides. Just, just ever so slight. Brush. I would dry brush this or you let it dry. Oh, well, heat, heat, heat's not great. Um, I would have just used a towel. It's just another device you have to have, and you're plugging this in, you're working with water, 
and uh, whoa, look at the depth of that mold. Okay. So she built a mold that should have been like this. She built it this thick. So it's okay. It's just not, it's just, it's not needed. And um, when you, oh, I don't know what I did. When you pour plaster, you see where the handle is on the bucket? The handle should always be back. You never pour over the handle because that handle is going to drop in front of that uh, stream and it's going to splash it everywhere. How do I get this back? Hang on. Uh, sorry, guys. See how that's taking time to do those clamps? It's OK, but. That is a really overbuilt mold. Using a spatula, clean the excessive plaster around your mold. The Just use a sure form. Now, if she doesn't know where her keys are, okay. Two things. She can cut her keys, and also she has like a, it's like a, a jewelry hammer almost. Mold making mallets, you want them because they have the weight, and they just, they carry it for it. A dead blow hammer is the best, which is a rubber mallet with sand in it. But um, you can cut your mold keys like this. I used to do this all the time. It's a sensible technique, but not if it's not controlled. Her hammer's bad. In the middle. You can try by opening it, hammering it gently in the middle of the mold. So you saw that um, they cut away to her separating it. I think something not good happened there for a while <laughs> because it didn't, yeah, I see chip out. Separate the halves and carefully remove the model from the plaster mold. Glass is tough. I think that was pre-removed. Your mold is done and ready for its use. After you finish, wash all the materials before putting them back in their place. Always leave your working space clean. I feel like she's telling me how to fly safely. Fasten your seatbelts. Above all, if you need any help or have any doubts while working in the workshop, never So this is a tutorial for a school, right? They will be happy to help in your project. The Hague, Hague University, Applied Sciences, Silicone Molds. Oh, God, even worse. So this is the tough part about making a video like this, is you have a really nice person who's taking the time to make a video, and yet they're doing things that aren't ideal, but they're in an educational environment. I mean, what do I, what do I choose, courtesy or instruction? And um, that's a difficult thing to, to do. So I try to separate, when I can, anything about the person but the, the work. And it blurs all the time. And so if I met this woman at an event or something like that, and she's like, hey, you were the asshole that reviewed my plaster mold making video, I would be like, very nice to meet you. But the work was, for the purpose of the video, the work was not um, ideal. So I feel like conflicted about that. But my bigger message is, is that I want more people to succeed than would succeed if they were watching only her. So I'm choosing craftsmanship over courtesy in this regard. And it's just something I'm going to do again and again. I try to be playful about it, but there's lessons in them, in them all, whether someone is a good mold maker or not. Um, I like that people are just willing to do it. There's a couple coming up that I picked that are far worse than this one. And yet they're like really confident in themselves. So I don't, haven't thought about what to do about that yet. I hope they're not next. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. We're getting ready to launch a new platform called Handufacturing. It's going to feature a lot more educational films about mold making and casting from very basic to advanced mold making. Our hope is that it helps the business entrepreneurs out there learn efficient ways to manufacture their products and bring a lot more wealth into their household. Stay tuned.